no government on earth that will announce a policy change without having data to support it. First uh, subsidy uh, regime was a policy. You don't you don't flip over that policy without sitting down to look at one the impact it will have on your economy, the impact it will have on the citizenry, the impact it will have on investors, both local, both domestic and international investors. You have to sit down, look at the available data that you have and scrutinize them to see where it falls if you are going to make a change of that policy that was one the another another one too was the unification of exchange rates you know one killed it the other one buried it you don't have so what was the problem with a uh, nigerian exchange rate i'll tell you a lot of people don't know when buhari came to power when buhari came to power the the investing in international public they call them uh direct foreign investment they were investing under kp morgan they will come under kp morgan that kp morgan was under okoje Wala at a time but people don't know so immediately buhari came on board there were some certain statements that he was making that didn't really sit well with these investors what do they do they just took their money, bought every available dollar in the Nigerian market, and left. So, you, if you check Buhari's government, you are going to check. You are going to see that throughout his eight years, the inflow of foreign direct investment into Nigeria, I don't think it was even up to two percent. I don't think Buhari actually attracted up to two billion dollars into the Nigerian economy. He didn't. So if you look at if you look at the Buhari's trajectory and the trajectory that um, uh, Tinubu is traveling on, it you simply know that Nigeria is it's not going to be how do I put it? Nigeria is 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 at the verge of collapse. Nigeria has no future. Not not let anybody tell you otherwise. There is there's no future for that country. There's no future for that country. Go and check all his policies. Sit down, just stick them one by one, analyze them, and you see where it falls. So, what the only thing that uh, Tinubu has succeeded in his one year in office that he has succeeded to widen the scope of inequality, injustice, and a degree of of ethnic ethnic. I don't know. I don't know how. To, I don't know the word to use. Intolerance. You know? Eth ethnic intolerance. Yes. That's what they are succeeded in achieving. And he will always find one or two persons in other regions to, to actually achieve all of this. Because who is Tinubu? Where is Tinubu coming from? I grew up in Lagos. I live in Lagos. I was, I was, I was, uh, I was, I was almost, uh, yes, I think I just passed out from the secondary school when Tinubu came on board. We knew what he did in Lagos. Tinubu did not do anything. The only thing Tinubu did was to increase the IGR of Lagos State by taxing everybody. That was the only thing he did. Tinubu did not build institutions. There was nothing like, okay, uh, okay, the university in Lagos, when Tinubu came, it became world class. There were no world class hospitals. There was, it was actually in, in, in Tinubu's period that we started digging borehole in Lagos. Tinubu introduced Boho in Lagos. I live in Festa. We never had, we were having, even as bad as it was then, we were still having some, you know, although not regular water supply at some point. Tinubu came and collapsed everything. There's no, there's no, there's no future for Nigeria. Don't tell anybody. We shouldn't be deceived. There's no future for Nigeria. Nigeria does not, except maybe, maybe there is this elite consensus to say, okay, let us change our ways. Otherwise, that country doesn't have a future. Don't let anybody tell you. If I go to a church today and the pastor says, ah, Nigeria is going to be like this, I will walk out of that church because God doesn't talk, God doesn't, God doesn't lie. Even when God was dealing with the children of Israel, he was dealing with their mindset, not their conditions. We do not have a mindset to revamp our country. We do not have a mindset to turn this around. Even look at the way Tinubu came to power. It's not that election was conducted. That didn't really come to power through that ballot. 
it came to power because of the structure, the political structure of Nigeria. And that is why Tinubu will do. Don't, don't be surprised. Next year, people that will be going to her, Tinubu will give them two trillion. Because those are one of the reasons why he was given power. There's nothing Tinubu is going to do. I just, when people start to talk and then people say, oh, this person is performing this, there is no one minister in Tinubu's cabinet that is performing. No one. There is no one minister in Tinubu's government that is performing. How do you judge performance? What are the KPI that you are using to judge them? Somebody mentioned uh, uh, Tundi Ojo. Tundi Ojo is not, it's not doing anything. What is Tundi Ojo doing? I just renew, I just tried to renew my password. I just renewed my password. I have not gone for biometrics. What's the essence of me having to log to, to use my laptop to, to, to fill in the form and still go to the Nigeria High Commission to go and get my password? It doesn't make sense. That's an incomplete project. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I feel everything. I put the Akao picture and everything. You still not tell me to go back to the embassy or to the high commission to go and pay money so that my, my thumbprint can be taken. My thumbprint has already been taken more than six times since I've been traveling. So what's the essence? My brother, there's no... I don't see any future for Nigeria. There's no future for Nigeria. Nigeria is not, it's not going on anything. You talk about the, this, uh, Tunde, this uh, David Umwai. What What is the problem? The environmental impact assessment that was carried out on that project did not favor the execution of that project. It does, it did not. That's why you see, if, if you look at when that project was going on, people were making noise. They were demolishing houses. Any house that is very close to any gutter, they will any 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 drainage, they will pull it down. Why? Because they know once you finish that road, there's going to be problem of flooding in Lagos. They know. They know. So that was why they were demolishing houses. It's not they, they were not looking at whether the person is Igbo, is Asian, is Bini, is this, is the uh, Europe. Anybody that just that just move an inch to any waterways in Lagos, they'll put the house down. Why? Because of that project. Now, now, now that they cannot continue with pulling down demolition houses, they now said because of cable. How can you be constructing road of that magnitude without having you, without you knowing that there are submarine cables on that route? How is that possible in this modern time? How is that possible? Yesterday, I was reading an article where the minister for for the Minister of State for Petroleum said that they, they are not aware that Dangotel is buying crude oil from the United States of America. And I was asking, does this guy understand the security implication of this statement? That a ship will come to your waters, you will, bet on your, will bet on your waters, will stay there for two, three weeks of load products, and the federal government is not aware. In other words, you understand, we are prone to be invaded at any time. Nigeria is in a sorry state, and it's very unfortunate that we... See, you being a Nigerian today is a burden. They see you as a disease. Tell anybody wherever you go that you are a Nigerian. They, 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 they see you as a plague. It's quite unfortunate. Tinubu is not going to do well. Tinubu will not do well. It's not doing well. And there is no way Tinubu can do well because he started on a very wrong trajectory.